Hi, this is Chloe from Inner Whispers. I'm pretty psyched about today's unboxing. This is the 78 cards deck created by 8 coins and the book is co-authored by the artist Lana Zellner, also Kellyanne Maddox of the Four Queens, Christy Tolbert, Sebastian Urkenson and Ethany Dawn. So the book comes signed by the artist, uh, I was part of the Kickstarter and then as it explains here uh, the introduction is written by Lana Zellner then Kellyanne Maddox wrote the meanings and interpretations for the Major Arcana and for the Minors it's Christy Talbot for the Wands, Sebastian Urkenson for the Cups and Ethne Dawn for the Swords and then the artist herself wrote the bit about the Pentacles. So it's a beautifully done book with full colour images and I really like as well that it tells you which number drawing it was, so when the artist drew this, so you can kind of watch her artistic progression through looking at how her style develops over time. I mean, obviously she has a very clear style right from the start, but she says herself in the introduction that she sort of didn't start using um, paints, I think, until a little bit later in the process. Before that, she'd always just used colour pencils. So you can sort of see that development. And the meanings here are pretty traditional, um, but they're nicely written by each of the uh, different co-authors. So it's a very nice book. And um, let's see. It kind of finishes with the pentacles uh, and before that we have each of the sort of aspects of it and there's not any, I mean there's this introduction and then we dive straight into the cards and there are no spreads or anything like that but just having these full beautiful images and the sort of descriptions written by some very interesting people within the tarot world is it's a lovely book very nicely done so moving on the deck comes in this little pouch we have Lana's details there and it's a little sort of velvet pouch <laughs> there's an extra card by a different person, the forest, drawing number 79 and this is also an extra card I'm guessing artwork by somebody else as well then we have the deck itself so let's have a look the deck comes out of order each card at the bottom has a little bit saying 78 cards, 8 coins, LLC, and drawing number 78 in this case. So this was the last one that was drawn. And I like this, it's a rather fun, playful one. I think that's probably going to describe the majority of the deck, to be honest. I've been following this as it's created on the Facebook page. So, yes, it's... A style of art that I really enjoy. Here we have the Six of Wands. She's wearing her triumphal laurel wreath. The King of Swords, very fierce and grim looking, determined, shall we say. Very cute, Three of Pentacles. And here the Ten of Pentacles, or coins, as Lana prefers to call them, focusing more on the old man and his dog outside than on the happily family on the inside. So there's an interesting change of perspective here. The King of Pentacles, looking quite happy, surrounded by his abundant grapes. The Five of Wands, a battle between the wands, but no people here, interestingly. We see that too with the six of coins, stylized hands, 
and seven of coins, a vine growing out of a hand held up, the hermit, the world, interesting that she's got these horns, I guess that has a, makes me think of the Thoth princess of coins actually, the high priestess, I like her look a lot. The Nine of Pentacles, I always like when this does have a woman on it, and the bird with the hood are also elements that speak strongly to me within this card. The Ace of Coins, very interesting the colouring here. Um, we have hands holding the cup up, which is a little unusual, and the colouring this is, strikes me as odd, I have to admit, because of the greyness of the water and the greyness all around, and yet the lotus blossom is very full of colour. So I guess it is a reminder, as so often, that great things grow out of the mud. But I would have expected a brighter colouring of this card. Three of Wands. So it's interesting, the choice that's been made. When people are in the cards, they're often shown very much in close-up but we also do not have people in all the cards that you would normally have. Still, I really like this. We have the boats, we have the sun coming up and the person's hand holding the one, so we do have that sense of waiting for your ships to come in, dawn of a new day, things coming from what has been started. This is an interesting one. Four of swords getting out of your head allowing the thoughts to drift off and away. Three of Swords, heartache. I like that you can't see her eyes and she has this kind of black widow look in her clothing. Works nicely. The Emperor. Quite a fierce skull he has up there. Oh, and the King of Cups. We don't actually have a full sort of person here. That's interesting. I wonder whether this says something about Beauty being in the eye of the beholder, or seeing from the heart. The Knight of Cups and his cup is kind of invisible. That's a real grail quest type thing, and a cute little tattoo heart on his face. Uh, the Four of Coins. Hmm. A skull, clouds. I kind of see the miserliness, I suppose holding it all together in this one little place that everything else is dark, but that it just leads to destruction when you do that. Mm. Oh, and a very fun Seven of Swords. Making off with her swords, she feels very jaunty. Ace of Pentacles, a little mysterious. And the Page of Cups, okay, a koi carp and some kind of a flower. I'm not great with my botany, I'm afraid. The Hierophant. Two crows. A key and an ank. A scarab beetle. The lovers. Snakes tangling together and roses. The four of cups. This is interesting, having the kind of eye crying into one cup and a hand holding out another further up. So there's quite a deviation in some of these from the traditional. Queen of Wands, once again no person here, and yet there's still plenty of symbolism, the sunflower, and let's see, what's that? Her hand says burn. I think that's some kind of feline on it. The sun. Happy, happy. And this will please some people. It's a sun where there's not actually all that much yellow on the card. This one's for you, JJ. Love the Eight of Swords there. That covers it perfectly. I like that it's not even a full body. So we have this close-up, but it's also something about being cut off from reality. The page of Wands, fun. I do like this little fox. And the tower. 
crack right up there. The Page of Swords. I must check out what bird that is. Wheel of Fortune. The Two of Cups. This kind of emphasises the partnership a little bit more than actual romance, which is fine by me. That works really well. And the Five of Swords. Hmm. So we have an eye in the cloud, a kind of scroll effect. And one person here looking very sad, another person here walking up the stairs. I don't know if that's a person melting into the waters. There's, once again, as I say, plenty of symbolism, even when it's non-traditional. And this stairway thing we've seen on quite a few cards already is an interesting touch. Two of Wands has the whole world in her hand. And the Seven of Wands. Standing up for what your heart believes in. That's a very literal heart. And the Five of Cups. Beautiful. The Queen of Swords. The single head bit over here works very well for this card in particular. And I like that she's attractive and has this blue mask over her eyes. Seeing clearly, speaking clearly. And the throat chakra is kind of the hilt of the sword. So lots of stuff going on there again. The chariot, he himself is the chariot to a large degree. He feels like he's not a full person, that he's mechanical almost. Justice. Interestingly, her scales are not balanced and she is wearing a blindfold. <laughs> the Seven of Cups. Definitely tempting you in. And the Six of Swords sailing off into the sunset. This time having left the swords behind, that's always an interesting one in terms of interpretations at an intuitive level. So this deck really does give a lot of opportunities for a variety of interpretations. Here we have the Four of Wands in a vase. And the Fool, I really like her sniffing the flower, but there's that snake there instead of having a cliff. So, yes. The danger of getting bit if you're not looking where you're going. And the Eight of Wands. Knight of Wands. She's fun. The Knight of Pentacles. Hmm. Very distant. Up on a plinth. Uh, that certainly speaks to the quote, kind of stability and stuckness, I guess. Um, but also there's this sort of keyhole element. A lot to think about there. The magician, that kind of hand taking action is a common theme with magician cards. And the Six of Cups, childhood joy, sharing. The moon, we just focus on the crustacean and the different phases of the moon. No howling wolves or dogs or towers here. And the Nine of Swords, oh, I'm loving that. It has a thoth feel to it, kind of dripping swords, but also this kind of, it is very much a nightmare scenario, I guess, being bound with swords above you. And, hmm. and yet the bed pain with the astrological symbols is echoed here through the tattoos on the hands. The Queen of Cups with her mermaid handmaidens. Beautiful balance for the two of pentacles. And very interesting. This looks almost more like the devil than judgment at first glance, with this horned demon thing. But I guess there's the angel and the devil. Which way will you go? What do you feel called to, perhaps? Judgment day? I always see it more as being about a vocation, a calling, rather than this you know, are you going to heaven or hell? But it's a different interpretation. And death. I don't know why this makes me think of the expression, death is a lady. And here we have the 
towers that we didn't have in the moon and the winding path. Interesting choices. The Page of Pentacles, times a ticking. Hmm. And the Eight of Cups. That really compresses all of it into a single close up shot. Cups with the gap in the middle, so very traditional Rider weight. Um, this was the 20th card drawn, so perhaps fairly early on in the journey. And the Nine of Cups, fascinatingly different. Trophies. I do love the Strength card. Really, both have been incorporated together, united. And the Queen of Pentacles is another personal favourite from this deck when I saw it being created. I really like the sweep of her eyelashes and the way that she's gazing so intently at her pentacle and the beautiful landscape around her. Temperance, very dark. Um, that's surprising to me. Still, there is the little crown of where you're heading to on a path and the flowers and yeah, okay. The Knight of Swords is charging. Now this is another interesting card because his horse has two heads. So yes, being in two minds about things, charging into trouble because you're not focused enough. Interesting. And this Ten of Swords, the hands are up on skewers and the swords are poked through. It's quite a gruesome version and yet we do have the flowers around and the dawn in the distance. And the devil is clearly the devil, uh, as opposed to the judgment card. The devil very much more foreground. And we have two bound people, but they're both women rather than a man and a woman. Though They do have the different tails that we have in the traditional Rider Waite image. So that's an interesting sort of combination, variation. King of Wands, yeah, and the Two of Swords, once again quite traditional. Ah, the Ten of Wands, no people here, but the bird dragged down by the weight of all those burdens so it can't even fly. Very interesting patterns all around. Ace of Swords, Clarity of Thought, and the Ace of Wands, Reaching for Your Dreams. The Eight of Pentacles is a card which the artist Lana Zelna particularly connects with. That idea of apprenticeship, learning, and working on things. So that's really lovely. And the Empress, just beautiful. Pregnant belly, the flowers, the songbird. And instead of stars on the crown, I don't know. Hmm. Five of coins certainly shows the sadness of hard times. She's bleeding. I'm always a little bit disappointed when there aren't two people here, but I can live with that. I do. I like the thunder and lightning, the storm around her. Instead of a snowstorm, it's a, a raging thunderstorm. And instead of a church window, we have a huge church in the distance. It gives a different feel to it that will be interesting for interpretations. Very traditional Ten of Cups, the star. She really is very intently looking up at it, even though she has no body. The landscape, it does have a path, guidance, yeah, that works. Interesting choice to not colour the Three of Cups. I wonder what that was based on. Oh. And likewise, the Nine of Wands. And that's it, we're back to the Hanged Man. In terms of the card stock and the backs. The backs are clearly fully reversible. Um, 
black with a white pattern. And the cardstock, the stack is a little bit too big to hold in one hand, though not by much. And I think it's going to shuffle fairly well. The cards have a nice flexible feel to them. This deck in particular has arrived with a bit of a, a bend on it, but you can see they riffle beautifully and will adapt nicely with shuffling, I'm sure. So I'm very happy with the cardstock on that. It feels durable, strong, easy to shuffle. 78 cards. Blessed be.